Hi again guys and welcome to episode 13 of Spirit of Le Mans, the review series where I'm evaluating the upsides and downsides of each purpose-built Le Mans prototype that features on Gran Turismo 6. So in this episode, as you can see, we'll be reviewing the Bentley Speed 8, which is actually based mechanically on the Audi R8, which it competed against in the Le Mans, and this car actually won the 2003 Le Mans 24 hour race. So that's it for our introduction, now let's go first of all to our city track and start this car's review. Now of all the early 2000s LMP cars that are on Gran Turismo 6, the Bentley is one of the most skittish, if not the most skittish. It has a lot of power, it's very quick in a straight line, especially top end, and you'd expect that to work against it on a city track. And I expected it to. I wasn't expecting this car to be very quick on a city track at all. But I couldn't have been more wrong. Because of all the prototypes I drove, this is the quickest around Monaco. It was even quicker than the Mazda LM55 VGT. And that car has the advantage of all-wheel drive. And this was still quicker than that. Now, for low-speed handling... I'm only going to give it a 4 out of 5, because although it is, as we said, quick on this track, it is the most skittish and prone to wheel spin in the low speeds. For city tracks, though, I'm going to give it a strong 5 out of 5, because you can't be the fastest and not get a 5 out of 5. It just shows how good this car is. And for acceleration also, I'm going to give it a strong 5 out of 5, because it is one of the quickest early 2000s LMPs, and one of the quickest LMPs overall. So that's it for our city track. Now let's go to our moderate speed technical track at Ascari. Now on moderate speed tracks, you'd probably think that based on how good it was on our city track, that it would be even better on a moderate speed technical track such as Ascari. And you'd be correct, it is very, very good. But the difference between this type of track and city tracks uh, although it is quick on city tracks, it doesn't feel fast. Whereas on these moderate speed tracks, you can really feel how good the car is and how fast the car is. Now, the wheel spin issue is still there. Of all the LMPs, to be quite honest, the Bentley is one of the most skittish. But it's far from undrivable. It has a good amount of grip. And the wheel spin is very easy to avoid, just be careful of how much throttle you give it out of corners. It's really as simple as that. And at the end of the day, all of the Le Mans prototypes can wheel spin if you exit the corner with too much power. So that's not really anything to knock the car with. Now for mid-range handling, I'm going to give it a strong 5, because it's very, very good. For drivability as well, I'm going to give it a 5. Because although it's a little bit trickier than some to master, once you do, it's one of the best cars you'll ever have. And overall, for moderate speed technical tracks, again, I'm going to give it a strong 5 out of 5. Because of all the cars I tested, it was the quickest. So, that's it for our moderate speed technical track. Now let's finally go to our high speed track at Spa. So we've established that the Bentley is very, very quick on city tracks and it feels very good on moderate speed tracks. So what's it like on the type of tracks that you would probably most expect it to be good at? High speed tracks. Well, on most high speed tracks, it's a very good car. It's brilliant on Lasarte, it's very good on Monza. And it's very, very good on a number of other extremely high-speed tracks. But on Spa, funnily enough, it's actually not as good as I was expecting. Now, I'm not talking about the way it drives. It drives very well, the handling is still good, the brakes are still good, the performance is still great. But it's not as quick on this track, when compared to its opposition, as it is on the other two tracks. Now, that may be just pure chance, because I didn't put in that many laps with this car. But neither did I with any of the other prototypes. So, for some reason, on this track with this particular car, the lap times that I got, or the lap time that I achieved, was actually slower than its opposition. Or most of it, anyway. 
which is surprising really because you'd think that this is the type of track where it would absolutely dominate but it doesn't it dominates city tracks and moderate speed tracks which is still good to know i mean those two track types make up by far the most of the tracks on gran turismo 6 and like i said it's still not bad on high speed tracks i'm still going to give it a rating on high speed tracks in general of five out of five it's just that for some reason it's not quite as quick as I expected it to be on this particular high speed track. So that's it for our actual test of the car. So now let's finally go back to the garage for a roundup of this car's best and worst point. So overall the Speed 8 is, as you're probably expecting me to say, a very good prototype. Now that may start to sound like a bit of a cliche because all of the prototypes are good at something. There is no, strictly speaking, bad prototype. But the thing that makes the Bentley so good is how good it is at a wide variety of things. Some cars, as I mentioned in one of the previous episodes, such as the Mercedes Sorber C9, they feel a bit over-specialised, that they're only good at a very narrow range of tracks. The Bentley doesn't feel like that. The Bentley is very, very good on a wide variety of tracks. It's great, as we've established, for city tracks. It's great for moderate speed tracks. And for most high speed tracks, it's very, very good. And there aren't many prototypes that can match this car's pace on such a wide variety of tracks and track types. So overall, I'd say that this car's best point is its versatility. It is so good at so many things that although it won't necessarily be the best at everything, it's so good at everything that it ends up averaging out to being one of the best, if not the best, all-round prototypes. As far as its worst point, well, its worst point would probably be that of the prototypes it does take a little bit more practice than most to really get the best out of the Bentley. I've heard people say as I mentioned earlier on in the video that they find it a little bit tricky to drive the Bentley and I can understand why you'd say that it is a bit prone to wheel spin the handling can be a little bit twitchy sometimes but that's nothing that the right setup and a few laps of driving can't sort out really. And once you do learn to drive it, which doesn't take all that long to be honest, it will serve you extremely well. So as always, as with all the prototypes, I would strongly recommend that you try this car if you haven't done so. And as usual, I'll put the ratings and lap times that this car achieved in the video description so you can compare it to the others if you need to. And as always, thanks for watching.